And he's going to talk tonight simply about emotions. Ladies and gents, George Griffin. Hello. I'm really worried about what the future holds for fish and chips. You see, overfishing is one thing, but global environmental change and global warming are going to have some serious implications on how our oceans function. And this will affect the number of fish in the sea and consequently how many I can eat with my fish and chips. You see, the oceans are like a big central heating system for the globe. They principally move hot water from the equator northwards to the pole and southwards to the pole. And these, this motion of warm water sets up a current. So you might have heard of the Gulf Stream in the North Atlantic, which is warming our continent, so we're significantly warmer than we would be without it. Now this current not only carries heat, but it's also carrying nutrients. And nutrients allow plants to grow in the sea. These plants get munched on by small animals called zooplankton, and these zooplankton get munched on by fish. So these currents heat our continent, but they also feed the fish in the sea. They carry fish feed. Now, the problem with these currents is they're very sensitive to climate change. And the best way of showing you this is to jump into a bath. If I'm sitting in a bath and it starts to get cold, the first thing I do is pour hot water in. The hot water is always around my feet, and I really want it around my back. So I have to set up a circulation to get this warm water around my back. And one way of doing that is to push the cold water down to the warm end of the bath, which displaces the warm water up to the cold part, and I start to get warmer. And this is exactly what we see in the North Atlantic. So upscale my bath so it's much bigger, and what we have is the same circulation. In the Arctic, which is behind me, very cold water becomes very dense and sinks to the bottom of the sea. This flows southwards down to the equator, where it pushes upwards. This displaces warm water from the equator, where it comes up and basically on floats on the surface because it's quite uh, it's low density and floats up towards us. And this is the Gulf Stream. This is carrying nutrients as well. And because it's a density-driven flow, if we release fresh water into the Arctic, as is happening already under a warming globe, we're losing our ice caps and we're losing our sea ice. This fresh water is diluting the salt, so it's reducing the density, so less water is plunging towards the seabed. Less water is being driven in what's called this thermohaline circulation, distributing heat across the Atlantic, but also distributing nutrients. So as less nutrients are distributed, less plants grow in the sea, less zooplankton can eat it, and less fish can eat these zooplankton. So in the future, if we dump more fresh water into the Arctic, we might see a reduction in this thermohaline circulation, and this could lead to a reduction.